We now live in an age of 4K gaming, and we are just entering the cusp of 8K, with frame rates going as high as 120 per second. It's crazy to think it wasn't long ago when these types of visuals were almost non-existent, and players had to use their imagination for the most part. On that note, text-based adventures used to be a huge deal, which naturally evolved into many, many visual novels. Games like Living in the End of the World attempts to harken back to this simpler time, where rather than using some kind of gameplay mechanic, it was the simple text-based choices that drove the progression. In this game, these choices can function as the main feature to deliver a genuine survival experience. Living in the Ending World, as the title suggests, has players taking on the protagonist's role who finds themselves in a world at the very brink of ending, where everything has been destroyed and humanity is all but gone. It doesn't take you long to run into your old classmate who joins you on this shared existence of survival. In the beginning, you get to choose a starter kit, and one of these even includes a portable game console with limited battery life. Despite living in a world with no food or clean water, you need to get your priorities straight, so choose wisely and always pick the portable game console. The game moves along on a day-to-day -day cycle, where you plan your activities for the morning, afternoon, and evening. In the first few cycles, the main thing you need to do is search for resources, and gradually, as you accumulate items, you can construct a home base of sorts, which improves your survival chances. The base serves as a shelter and you can craft useful items as you learn new recipes. Slowly but surely, you and your companion can travel to new locations, each introducing new possibilities in terms of food, tools, and crafting materials. The game is surprisingly robust, with a long list of tools that you can salvage along with items. Using these can be for survival, all of which help the gameplay immersion. There are light RPG elements too, as you need to manage stats like strength and knowledge, which help you adapt the world and cope with the many dangers. These adversaries mostly come as predators and other awful folks who will do anything to steal your food. In building up the characters, you need to pay attention to their hunger and sanity, making sure they are well fed and are comfortable as can be, while at the same time keeping their hopes up to not spiral out of control. The gameplay progression is rather fast, as decisions are actioned quickly, and it takes mere seconds to move through the day cycles. This gives living in the ending world a bit of a roguelike feel where multiple playthroughs are necessary as you're likely to die of starvation early on. Much like a visual novel, there are multiple endings here, and so there is some replay value to enjoy. A player's actual enjoyment of living in the ending world will likely depend on their platform of choice, and ideally you'd probably want to play this on a phone or tablet to get the game's best experience. Sadly, the PC version doesn't really provide this, as it comes off as just a simple port of the mobile version, screen resolution and all. Visually, the game is simplistic as it comes using black and white aesthetics with limited spooky music to get things going. There's really not much to say about the production value other than the presentation gets the job done in creating a bleak and dying world that the player must survive in. However, I did end up encountering some text glitches where the words would mix up and I would basically lose an entire run because I couldn't read what was going on on the screen. Living in the ending world is a neat experience and idea as it creates a survival experience within the classic text-based adventure genre. However, it ultimately feels like a demo that could potentially be a much bigger game someday. While it adds some unique ideas to the narrative adventure genre, their survival and crafting elements and the entire experience is short-lived with fast RNG systems that work better on mobile devices. Living in the ending world is a neat idea that I would love to see expanded on. Noisy Pixel is giving Living in the Ending World a 6.5 out of 10. Thank you for watching. Please read the full review on NoisyPixel.net. NoisyPixel is run by a group of gamers who work hard to deliver news, reviews, previews, and more. Please subscribe to keep up with all our future content.